right now. Um, so Lois, tell me what is going to be the best part of your day today? Uh, the best part of my day is today when well, I'm cleaning up from the party still. <laughs> So that's not the best part, but <laughs> I really don't mind it. It was really fun. Um, the best part of my day will be throwing bags with my husband. We play that cornhole game oh, where you throw yes. bags in the thing. Yeah. So yeah, we, he started playing like a year ago and I thought, you know, kind of rolled my eyes like, oh, here we go. Another <laughs> obsession, which, yeah. But then I started playing just to give him a little competition in the backyard. And now we're both obsessed with it. So oh. I'm very proud to say that we are currently the Coachella Valley Cornhole champions over what? at the um at the Agua Caliente Casino in Cathedral City. They have the league over there, the Wednesday night league. Yeah. So we we won it last season and the new season hasn't started yet. So we're just boasting for months and months that we're <laughs> the champions, right? Yeah, that's <laughs> so. so cool. I've only played that game like twice. And yeah, like everybody plays in their backyard, right? And you just throw the boards out there some particular whatever distance. But oh my gosh, it has become such a thing since um since the pandemic. A lot of people, you know, mm -hmm. just for something to do. And oh my, they're professionals, and now there's tournaments everywhere, and everybody's joining in. And it it's the craziest thing. I think big deal. You're throwing a bag in a hole, you know, how hard <laughs> is it? But there's a lot of strategy. There's a lot of, it's a lot of fun. So we play, my husband has a beautiful court set up in our backyard. So we play every day, you know, later in the day or earlier in the day, depending mm -hmm. on the heat. So yeah. Um, yeah. Always well, a next time, next time I come over, I'll have yeah. to throw some yeah. bags with you. We'll give you and some tips. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and so and I my can, husband is, I can win the next barbecue. My husband's really good. People always ask like at tournaments, they go, which one of you is better? And I always say like, my husband's better, but he can't beat me. It's like this psychological thing that as soon as I start throwing a couple in the hole, <laughs> mentally, he gets all, yeah. you know, like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And then he just starts throwing them all haywire. So it cracks me <laughs> up because he really is a better player, but he can beat everybody else, but he can't beat me. So yay. That's <laughs> awesome. It's, yeah. it's psychological. I love that. Um, it's fun. Awesome. How many people did you end up having on your um uh, at your your barbecue your there was eight of us there. there was eight which was okay. intentional because you know we didn't want to be outside it was too hot so we have right. a dining room table that holds eight nicely so it was three other couples and us and it yeah. was just right it was just perfect so oh that's perfect. awesome do you do you entertain a ton or is it like once twice a year usually it's the girls you know like we have a little foursome <laughs> i'm sure chris told you like our foursome yeah. and we said let's get the husbands involved for a change you know <laughs> so we're i'm always doing stuff with the girls you know a lot we kind of trade around at different houses i have the biggest house so mm -hmm. a lot of times they go oh you know we need to do it over at your house so we can <laughs> spread then you gotta clean up right yeah <laughs> and I, I like cozy spaces like my friends all have cozier ones so it's fun i mean i love my house i'm happy with it but it's it's amazing they're all like oh you have all this space and i said well i prefer you know i you know, it's a lot to deal with yeah, so i'd rather have of a smaller course. house well yeah. chris's house like i went to um mm -hmm. i went to her little she has a a, a puzzle corner and i thought yeah that don't you love that cool it was such a nice little like cozy spot the setup they have is amazing too. Like I know. they have a board so they can pick it up and move it if they need to use the table. And they were laughing yesterday saying that, you know, you can't do anything with their dining room table because there's always a puzzle going. So I think that's good. You know, puzzles are fun. It keeps your mind working. So I, I, I like exactly. that. I think it's great. Yeah. 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 All right. Awesome. Well, hey, um, I, I do. I want to ask this to everyone I talk to. Um, okay. So, you know, I, I, I turned 20 at the end of last year. So I'm awesome. still trying to figure out this life thing. Um, right. But I, I like to ask everyone I meet, what do you wish you knew at 20 years old? Like, what advice do you have for me? Ah, for you at 20 years old, I would say if you have to keep reinventing yourself, just do it, you know, do whatever you're doing at the time and be the best that you can at it. That's, you know, I've worked um, jobs, I've worked clerical jobs and I've had my own businesses and it didn't really matter if I'm working for myself or somebody else, you just give it your all. You do your very best that you can. And then if you feel like there's something calling at you to do, 
you know, on your own, like you feel like, well, I could do this. Don't be afraid. Take a leap of faith, do it. And, you know, it's hard work. People think, oh, you have your own business. You can just do whatever you want. Take days off. No, 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 no. It's not how it it's, is. It's hard work, just like a job. You think people think, oh, this job is a grind, you know, da, da, da. I'll just, I want to do my own thing. And then I'll just make all the money instead of my boss getting all the money. And you know, it's a struggle. We've had lean years with our, with our own businesses, but eventually for us, we worked hard. My husband and I both, we had an electric contracting business in Orange County oh, wow. and um, it, you know, it took off after three hard years where we always talk about how, you know, we ate Taco Bell like three days a week because they had those <laughs> nine, they had those 19 cent tacos, you know, back yeah. in the nineties. So, yeah. I mean, that was cheaper than trying to even buy food. So it was lean. We, we kept our paychecks in the drawer for days, you know, cause we couldn't cash them cause we didn't have the, the cash flow. So sure. that would be my advice. Just take risks, take calculated risks, do, always, always do the best you can, you know, at ever, any job, I can tell that you're that kind of a guy at a young age, here you are, you know, you know, yeah doing this job doing the best at it hustling so yeah just keep hustling and you will be successful that that would be my advice thanks um real quick you talked about owning a business that's actually my goal and i'll there talk about that a little bit later um, okay. kind of the reasons i'm working here but um right. what what pitfalls do you think that you hit when you started your business that if you went back and did it again you could avoid cash flow capital Okay. Make sure, you know, you th some businesses can be started on a shoestring, but you know, you really, for others, you need capital, save, 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 save. I've always been a saver, save money, save money. I don't have to live a lavish lifestyle. Always lived well within my means. I don't like yeah. debt. Don't rack up debt. Make sure you're clear of debt. Get a nice chunk of capital going so that you've got positive cash flow. You know, you don't want to have negative cash flow where you can't cash your paychecks, right? Yeah. So, yeah, um, that would be um, and and employees. <laughs> employees are a pitfall, and you get to the point where you need to scale your business, right? And be, you know, you got you need to grow. That's the goal. But I can tell you from experience. Um, growth to a certain point is good you know you'll you'll mm -hmm. grow you'll make more money but with our electrical business we just thought oh you know let's just grow let's just get more business more employees and i'm telling you it's just more work for no extra money because employees will drain yeah. you of your energy mm -hmm. there's some really great ones don't get me wrong we had some good ones who were loyal that stayed with us and i wished i could clone them Luckily, my husband worked for me in the electrical business, my brother. I mean, those two loyal, trustworthy, and we had some other ones too, but I got to tell you, 75% of them, especially in the, I mean, it's a stereotype for a reason in construction. You just got guys who they have DUIs, so they don't have any driver's yeah. license. They've got child, um, child support with, you know, withholding earnings mm -hmm. that they send to me. And then I got to withhold money out of their check. And it's just, yeah, it's, it's just a, a big it is a very big headache. So I would just say, choose wisely with employees, go slow, don't grow so big and hire 10 people all at once. It'll be a nightmare just getting them to show up to work. I'm telling yeah. you. So yeah, I, cash flow okay. and employees. Yeah. Those awesome. are my two things. My last question for you. Uh, you said your, your, your uh, email intrigues me. It's oh, info at fundraising. At Kingdom Fundraising. Yeah. yeah. So what is that? Is that is that your you know your next chapter? Or is it, it was my last. It was my last chapter. So I um I when we moved out to the desert from Orange County, we basically retired the electrical mm -hmm. business and just decided we had a home out here. So we just picked up, sold everything, moved out here, and then said, well, what are we going to do now? You know, we got to do something. We were in our, in our 50s, like mid-50s. So yeah. my husband was interested in golf carts. So he just taught himself. He's pretty handy uh, on anything mechanical. So he watched some videos and he taught himself golf cart repair. So because there's golf carts all over. Of course. Here, right? Yeah. So he got into that and just started helping like widows you know their husband would die and they'd have this golf cart and the batteries would be dead so yeah. he'd help them and he'd do stuff and he wouldn't charge him but then pretty soon they'd start talking and telling people about this guy wayne da, 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 da. he's real trustworthy he's really nice he'll come and change your light bulbs in your house because he was an electrician and he's you know, gonna help you he's not gonna rip <laughs> he's not gonna rip you off so pretty soon everybody's calling him and he told me you know i think i can make a little business out of it and i said okay go for it okay i'm gonna find something myself to do so i um 
I had gone to a family wedding and had this pastry called a butter braid pastry. It's a frozen chunk of dough that you take it out of the freezer and you just let it thaw all night on a pan and it swells up and rises into this beautiful, delicious braided pastry. My sister served one in Illinois. I had, I was there for a wedding and I, I, I was like a pig. I ate like half the thing myself. And I said, <laughs> where, I said, where did you get this thing? It's just amazing. And she whipped this thing out of her freezer and said, it's a butter braid pastry. It's frozen. And they sell them only through fundraisers. And I said, well, I have to go home and get some. So I came home and I went on their website, oh. butter braid. I was just, you know, hunting for pastries and it came up, you know, local dealer so it was san diego so i call you know i call this guy and i said oh my gosh i need some of these pastries you know how do i get them and he goes you know you can only buy them through a fundraiser they, they keep it exclusive to help the kids who need to raise money like bands and choir you know all those people those ones so i was so bummed and i said well where the, where's your fundraiser i'll buy through a fundraiser and well they, they were in san diego right so I thought, that's just tragic that there's no pastries here I can get, right? So I went on the Butterbrain <laughs> website and I clicked this thing that said, become a dealer. And I read all this stuff and, you know, what you needed to do, you needed to have a certain amount of capital and you needed a vehicle yeah. for delivery. Anyway, long story short, I clicked it. I filled out the application. They're based in Iowa. They called me back. And they said, um, gosh, your application looks amazing. Are you really sure this is basic? You know, it's, it involves sales. And I said, yeah. I can do sales. I, you know, I, I can go to schools. <laughs> anyway, they flew me to Iowa. They, I did an interview with the marketing team. And bam, I was approved to be a dealer because you get an exclusive area. So I had the Coachella Valley. I would go to schools. I would do little presentations. And then I would give them the kids a little pastry sample and that would get them so then they'd be excited to take their little forms around sell pastries yeah. to people and then I would deliver the frozen pastries at school you know like a couple of weeks later so of course. anyway that went crazy it took off I ended up with my territory expanded all the way to Redlands and Reno oh Valley goodness. and Hemet and all the way up the 10 freeway so it got crazy I eventually needed to hire an employee but I you know I got a good one so I did that for like seven years, but it was, it was hard, hard work. Um, so when the pandemic hit, oh my gosh, that was it. All fundraising just stopped, right? Schools closed, nobody yeah. was doing it. You couldn't meet, you couldn't even meet to make a delivery. Remember how crazy it was at first? Like, you know, no, I do. no groups, no nothing. nothing. So, <laughs> and I was kind of looking for my exit plan. I was like, hmm, this has been fun, but, I'm, but I didn't want to let down all my groups, right? Like, of course. you know. I know yeah. I could be replaced, but anyway, it shut down and I thought, this is my exit plan. I will just Jump quietly, <laughs> I will quietly exit. I distributed all my inventory because people wanted it mm -hmm. and that was it. And then people, after the pandemic, people's customers started coming back and I would just, uh, I deferred them to the San Diego dealer who were new. They bought the San Diego dealership right before the pandemic hit, which oh. was disaster for them disaster. I felt bad for them. I gave them a bunch of my stuff. I sold them my freezers because you got to have multiple freezers. I had of course um, nine freezers in my garage. So anyway, sold them the freezers for a good price. So anyway, that was my business, which I shut down just this past year. So now I'm, uh, I'm like, my husband's like, well, what are you going to do? I was like, um, I don't know. That. Throw. Every day, every day, yeah, throw bags every day in my calendar. I swim, you know, I, um, yeah. I do lots of stuff. So yeah. Okay. Wow. Yeah. That's so cool. Uh, yeah. it, it sounds like you've, you've gotten some sales experience too, which is, I, I've heard it's the hardest thing ever. I don't know it, if that's true. It really, it just depends on your personality. Like it was no problem for me to get up in front of a bunch of kids and, you know, give yeah. my spiel. If I had to do it in front of a bunch of adults or just, you know, kind of standing a little there, harder. you know, yeah. looking at you, they'd probably, I don't care. I don't care. I, you know, it doesn't matter. I, I make a fool out of myself. It yeah. doesn't matter. I, I thought it was fun, but a lot of people go, oh, oh my gosh, I couldn't do what you did. Yeah. That, you know, I, hard, I love it. Yeah. I love I, you have the personality to do it. So, yeah. All right. Well, hey, um, is it all right if I tell you a little bit more about myself? Yes, kind of the reason absolutely. behind why I'm doing this. Okay, right. I'm going to pull up my screen. Um, okay. And this might make it a little bit, I might be a little laggy. I don't know. I'm hoping it's oh. not. Oh, it's good. Okay. Um, so a little bit about me. Um, so I'm the oldest of three siblings. Okay. Uh -huh. See, I've got a stepbrother, a full yeah. sister, and then a half brother. He's okay. seven. He just turned seven. Um, oh. And yeah, so I, you know, Kind of the, the reason behind why I'm working here is, uh, first, I want to graduate debt-free. That's kind of my biggest reason behind this. Good. Um, Good. I, I know that's something that you were talking about. Um, yep. My, you know, my, 
my past is a little crazy. My my mom got married. Um, she actually worked at Camp Cedar Falls, which is like up in the San Bernardino Mountains. Mm -hmm. She met her husband there, and they wow. fell in love. It was like kind of the perfect, right? The perfect Blending. relationship. Yes. Yeah. Um, my mom said she was always waiting for the honeymoon phase to end, and it never really did. Uh, um, yeah, and so I, I got that kind of a great good. look at what I'm what I'm heading for. Um, right. Unfortunately, you know, my dad did end up passing away when I was seven. He was hit by a car while he was um, oh. training for a triathlon. Yeah. It oh kind of, no. Yeah, it, <sighs> it flipped my world upside down. Um, changed my life. Dang. Um, and you know, now it's been almost thirteen years, or mm -hmm. I, yeah, almost thirteen years, and. Um, you know, I'm still looking back and I, this, this position actually helped me kind of reframe my mindset. So, okay. you know, I was, I was very upset for a long time. Sure. Um, yeah. And, you know, after getting this job, it, they, they kind of change your mindset from like, Hey, this is a horrible experience to ow that hurt, but how am right. I going to be able to help others through my experience? And that's kind of what right. I found is, you know, I was able to help some of my friends who were depressed, who were you know, sure. cutting themselves who were, who were not in a great place sure. because of my past. And as right. I move forward, that's kind of my mindset. And so right. my mom got remarried. So I got to see the perfect husband. Nice. And then the husband that was, you know, fell, fell short in, in a lot of ways. Um, mm -hmm. You know, he was verbally abusive. He kind of destroyed our finances. He tried to start three businesses. Oh, no. They all failed. And then oh. he ended up divorcing my mom. And so, you know, we're <laughs> still kind of brushing ourselves off from that. Sure. But what I, what I learned is I'm still standing, you know, I'm, I'm working towards this goal right. of graduating debt free. I want to, um, you know, help my mom. Yep. Um, you know, I, I want to take my mom somewhere special cause she's kind of been the rock in my, my, oh, my, nice. my, my house. Like, so I sure. want to take her on vacation. Um, right. and then, you know, I'm also, obviously I, I want to own my own house by the time I finish college and right. I want to be in a place where I can take that and start getting investment properties by the time I'm awesome. awesome. Yeah, awesome. so I've got, I, I, got a, a plan that I'm working towards. Yeah, that's I don't great. know how well it's going to work, but we'll, we'll see. Um, well, I mean, but just even having that much of a plan at your age is pretty amazing, right? And, yeah. and again, because, you know, everything hasn't just been handed to you. You haven't had this perfect, you know, fairy tale life, which is, yeah, I'm not going to go into all my all stuff too, but I had similar situation yeah. of how I have how I grew up, you know, that you have to, if you wanted anything, you work for it. Like nothing was handed exactly. to us. I mean, I had wonderful grandparents, um, pardon my French, but shitty parents. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, yeah. you know, I feel like God blessed me with the most amazing grandparents. So, you know, in a lot of ways it made up for the parents, but um, yeah, so I, I totally understand your situation. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Yeah. And, and then I, I also, you know, like I said, I'm going to school right now. I go to Walla Walla University up in Washington state. Oh wow! I'm studying nice. business. Yeah. Nice. Uh, and when I'm not trying to, you know, pay for my college or figuring out what the heck accounting is supposed to be about. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I do, I do have some hobbies. I love to play guitar. My dad used to play guitar. So it's kind of my way of uh, remembering yeah. him. And then right. I also make pens. So if you look right here, um, yeah. I actually made those. Um, oh my gosh. Yeah, wow. my my dad used to make pens as well, so it's kind of my really? way of yeah remembering who he was and connected living yeah. on his legacy. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, what about you? I know I know you're you're the the cornhole queen. Um, what else yes, do you like you. to do? Do you guys do you guys do traveling or are you? Yeah, we body? travel a bit, quite a bit. Um, all of our family is everywhere else. I have my one brother that used to work for us. He's in Riverside, and he now my my part of the story about my fundraising was, you know, once I got um, accepted as a dealer, be well, before I even went, I said to my husband, hey, will you do this with me? This will be fun. And he said, yeah, I'll do it. And then his golf cart business blew up. So he couldn't, <laughs> he, he couldn't help me. So it was he. So then his business blew up. And then he hired my brother, he begged my brother, Mark, you have to come help <laughs> me with this because Mark had gone on to work for another electrical contractor after yeah. we retired and he hated it. And he said, oh. yes, I don't know anything, but Wayne said, listen, my husband, Wayne said, I will teach you the business. I know you, I know how mm -hmm. you work. I know your work ethic. You'll get it. You'll pick it up, which he did. He said, and then when I'm ready to be done with it, cause my husband is a serial entrepreneur. He just likes to start, you know, new businesses. Oh, I wish he was here. I would ask him so many I questions. I know, right? I know. So anyway, so we just made that transition in this past year. He literally gave the business to my brother 
and now my brother has taken it over and is running with it. So that's, so that's really cool. cool. So our kids and our grandkids live in Boise, Idaho. So okay. we, you know, always go there. Three grandkids there. I'm from Illinois. So all my family, my sister, my uh, other brother, my mom still alive. They're all in near the Chicago area. So we have yeah. to go there a lot. Um, my husband's family is in Great Falls, Montana. So, I mean, oh, our wow. summer is just like mo every month, one thing after another. And then we go to Maui every year in November. We go on Thanksgiving Day to Maui for a week. Oh. So that's like our, our oh. together getaways. So, yeah. yeah we, we Maui's beautiful. I've gone, oh my gosh. I've gone there once and it's just. That's an awesome. It's our favorite place on earth, honestly. It's like, we yeah. just love it. So yeah. I, I, I was young when I went. So I couldn't, mm. I didn't really leave the the little resort and oh okay you no know, yeah when i yeah. go back I'm, i i want to go oh gosh explore the, the go forest. to lahaina go to lahaina it's a little town there and it's so much to see um there's whalers village just just the town is right on the ocean so you just you walk up and down the streets there's shops there's you know um restaurants little bars it's the it's just lovely we just love it yeah maybe i'll do that at the end of the summer i'm I'm trying to make sure that I, I maintain my energy. That's something that go. this year I'm exactly. trying to do. Cause last year I, I ran the Palm Springs office and developed mm -hmm. 68 representatives. Wow. Um, yeah. And so at the end of the summer, I was shocked. I was so oh, tired. Yeah. Um, you do have to reach recharge yourself. Yeah. yeah. This summer I'm, I'm hitting that point again. And so I'm trying to give, give myself something to look forward to. And I've been trying to figure out where I'm going at the end of the summer. So maybe it's going to be Maui. I don't know. Um, but we're already up to 50 there you go. people yeah. that I'm, I'm recruiting and developing and the summer's half over. Amazing. So we're probably going to hit a hundred. Oh my gosh. Um, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Wow. And so I, I love it. Um, I'm in charge of Hemet now as well. Uh, my, my division manager, you yeah. know, last year we, we did really well. And so he's like, Hey Eric, I want you to take more places oh this summer. And you know, it's kind of like a summer internship that I get to Hem do. Yeah. Hemet is huge. Hemet, Hemet was yeah. part of my territory. It's spread out. Like yeah, you drive from one end to the other. It's far. And it's nothing but freaking stop signs. I'm like, put some stoplights <laughs> in this town. <laughs> You're stopping every block. Yeah. It drove me crazy, but yeah. that's awesome. Good for yeah, you. Yeah. So, um, well, I, I know I, I talked a little bit about the reason I'm working, but, um, you know, I, I want to just expand. Obviously, I have a scholarship that I'm trying to earn. That okay. will help me pay for school. Um, nice. There's also a trip to Cabo that nice. I can win. I've love gone Cabo. twice. I have not missed a Cabo trip. Love um, Cabo. Yep. Love it. It's like all expenses paid. Like it's so it's fun. Really great. It's... And it's cool because I get to connect with some of the, the best. That's the awesome. Right. Um, yep. Resume building. Go ahead. Yep. Oh, go ahead. Okay. Um, resume building. You know, I, I am trying to put on my resume in case I don't do my own business things that when someone sees me, they're like, oh, this is sure. a no brainer. I got to hire right. him. Um, yep. and then obviously making connections. I've met so yes. many awesome people. Um, nice. I, have you, have you heard of islands, the restaurant? Yes. I met the founder. Of oh, Island. nice. I was like, Dude, that's so cool. That's and, so cool. Um, yeah. Callaway golf. I met yep. the first female CFO. Nice. Um, they were a couple and I was like, wow, I'm that's just awesome. in the presence of greatness. So right? like, I, I love it. I get to meet so many people. And, That's cool. you know, be introduced to yep. a, a bunch of awesome new people who mm -hmm. I consider my friends afterwards. Like, um, Absolutely. And right? in Palm Springs, last summer, I went and sharpened someone's knives. This summer, I came back to sharpen one of her neighbor's knives. And she's like, That's... Eric, and I'm like, Candy, I didn't See? know you were going to be here. And so right? like, now I get to interact with people in person, too. Right. And so it's, it's really cool. And next summer, right, um, when, when you get your knives, next summer, I'll be able to sharpen your knives. And awesome. Chris's knives as well. And so right. we'll have like a little, right little here. party over there. Yeah. Well, that's all this. Yeah. That's how this started. She said, Hey, my guy's coming to sharpen my cut exactly. knives. And I was like, I wish I had cut co knives. I want to <laughs> get mine sharpened. So that's how that started. So yeah. I get it. You're building relationships. That's exactly. the way to look at it. Not just exactly. that you're going to get a sale. You know, that's, that's never yeah. the way to look at it. If you want to keep, you know, getting repeat business and referrals like you are getting. Yeah. Right? Exactly. Yes. And and not only that, but like, I, I, I love hearing from my people like they're Barbara right. Rowe. She, yes. she's a retiree down in Napa Valley. And every once in a while, she'll just randomly call me up. She's like, Eric, how are you doing today? Right? Like, I'm doing See? great. How are you? It's like, I'm yeah. doing great. I had nothing happening. I thought of you and I was like, I should call him. And That's so awesome. I'll just get random calls. 
That's like a great she, testimony. Yeah. yeah, one of one of my favorite people to talk to. She has she was bird sitting when I talked to her, and so every oh time gosh. I talked to her, that's I, hilarious. I asked her, hey, what? How's the bird? She's like, ah, I know. I'm back with the zone. That's cool. <laughs> I love that. All right. Yeah. Um, well, hey, I want to let you know. Um, I, I'm going to make four promises to you. Okay. Um, All right. First, first, you know, my my goal is to sell um seventy five thousand dollars worth of Cutco this summer, around okay. managing a two hundred twenty five thousand dollars range. <laughs> so a little bit ambitious. You can see I'm, yeah. I'm not where I need to be. Um, okay, I'm, I'm I got your thermometer. Four, yeah, four thousand two hundred thirty dollars. So if you just oh, want yes. to get that last, you know, seventy-one thousand, oh yeah, I can right. be done for the summer. I'll clean you know, that up for you. Early. Right? Yeah, I want to be your <laughs> hero. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm just kidding. Um, I get but, it. You know, seventy-four thousand dollars. That's like three knives. So I should hit that anyway. Um, yeah. Really right. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so I see it says I'll be your most expensive. So yeah. yeah. Um, well, I, I will make you four promises first. Um, like us, like you said, I'm going to be your most expensive friend. Uh, Cutco is not cheap. It usually costs an arm and a leg. Today we might get away with just an arm. Um, okay. But you know, you buy once, you cry once, and then you okay. have it for the rest of your life. Oh, okay. Um, right. Second, I promise I'm going to ask you for recommendations, um, okay. introductions, kind of like mm -hmm. how I asked Chris. And right. after introducing me to you, she also introduced me, I think, to to 14 other people who um, wow. you know, I'm going to reach out to. Right. Wow. So, um, I get paid just to show. So even if they don't buy. I, I, yeah. I meet a new friend, right? Nice. And right. Um, I also get to, to talk to cool people. Good. Um, yeah. And then I, I promise I'm going to be a highlight of your day. Hopefully I'm going to make All you right. laugh a little bit. Um, okay. I, I don't know yeah. if I'm going to be able to compete with your, your best. I was just, just going to say, it'll, <laughs> you're, you, you might get close, but yeah, it's, that's tough yeah. to be, you know, to be the champion. Of, I know, you know, I know. <laughs> um, and then I'm so I, humble I too. Be, yeah. <laughs> Uh, and then I, I promise I'm going to be your, your Cutco consultant. Um, basically, I'm going to create a Cutco wish list for you. Keep track of all the stuff you love. And if you want to give it, get it all today, I'll give you like a super turbocharged discount. But, um, okay. you know, worst case scenario, I can let you know when things go on sale. Um, okay. But, you know, yeah. most importantly, and I, I want to just stop and say this. Um, thank you so much for, for helping me towards my goals for watching this appointment. I know you already have some, some ideas of what you want, which is great. Mm -hmm. But just the okay. fact that you're taking some time out of your day, I know mm -hmm. it's precious. And so okay. I really appreciate you taking some time out of your day. Okay. Um, yeah, real quick, I do want to just touch on the recommendations, referrals. I'll talk about it a little more later. Um, but I also I always try and give my, my people a chance to win free Cutco. So at the end of the, the presentation, when I ask for recommendations, you can earn free Cutco just by um, referring me to some of your awesome friends. So this is my okay. sponsor, Hall of Fame. These wow. are some super awesome people who've helped me out so much by recommending me to, uh, to cool people like yourself. So, okay. you know, I've got... And this is just the recent, like, I'd say, um, recent 75 demos that I've done. But, wow. um, you, you know, must some be busy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> some people recommend me to 20. And then, like I said, Barbara Rowe, one of my favorite people in the world, she recommended me to 146 people. Holy uh, moly. Still haven't reached out to all of them. <laughs> but wow. she, you know, um, one of the things that the sponsorship helps me with is the sponsor, once I get 50 sponsors, I get a, a scholarship that I can put towards my tuition. And nice. each sponsor is 10 recommendations. So it's, okay. a, it's a huge way you can help me out um, okay. just by, you know, recommending me to some of your awesome friends. Okay. All right, 